Hey, Happy New Year everyone. Welcome back to Cooking Course. I'm Chef Todd Moore. I hope your holidays were great. Did you use some of the suggestions that I gave to you? I hope you made uh, nice uh, holiday appetizers or used puff pastry or gravlox or any of the things that I showed you. I hope it made your holiday better. I hope you had some enjoyment in your kitchen. But it's a brand new year. It's 2009 and uh, I'm a little rusty having not done any episodes in two weeks or so. Plus, uh, I'm a little hungover also. So we're going to do something really, really simple. We're going to make it easy on Chef Todd today. Uh, we're going to do something really simple today, which is crepes. Crepes are simple, but yet um, they perplex so many people. I have more people asking me if I have a crepe maker or where they can buy a good crepe maker. I say, I don't have a crepe maker, but my wife has a crepe maker. Name Chef Todd Moore. What do you need a specific device to make crepes for? You need a pan and you need some basic batter. This is one of the few instances that I recommend Teflon pans. I've got a nice seven inch omelet pan here lined with Teflon. It makes things um, a lot easier uh, to do with our crepes when we have Teflon. One of the few times because we're not rendering any fat. We're not trying to get any fond on the t uh, bottom of the pan. We're not trying to release that fond to make a pan so Sauce. We're just trying to make some crepes. I learned this cool pan flipping thing. Anyway, uh, so we're going to make some crepes today. It's a very simple procedure. This is a close cousin to the pancake. It's a close cousin to pat a choux. It's a close cousin to uh, popovers that we've done before. And it's very, very simple. But the procedure, like so many things, is the most important. So over here, my ingredients. Actually, the first thing I'm going to do is get a fire under the pan. Having the pan hot is the most important aspect of making crepes. Um, having a hot pan, like when you make pancakes, you know the first pancake never comes out right and they have a phrase in French culinary, it, it goes something like the first crepe pour le chien, which is, means um, the first crepe is for the dog. It never, never comes out right. Hot pan is the most important thing. And what I have are my ingredients over here. I have four ounces of flour by weight on my spring scale. I've also got a half ounce of sugar that I've put in here. I've got two whole eggs that I'm going to use. I'm going to use a little pinch of salt, an eighth of a teaspoon for those of you that have to measure. I have eight ounces of milk can be whole milk, can be skim milk, can be anything that you want. And lastly, two ounces of melted butter. Now again, put uh, two chefs in a room and you'll get five opinions, but this is my way, made, way to make crepes. I've got my four ounces of flour and a half ounce of sugar that I'm going to go ahead and add into the bowl, all my dry ingredients. A pinch of salt will open our palate a little bit. And then we're going to go ahead and crack the eggs into there. One, two, and make a paste from the eggs and the flour. Using my whisk, go ahead and start stirring that around and as best I can make a paste from the flour and eggs. And see how that starts to look uh, a little sticky. This hardly looks like it's going to be a crepe. So let's add a little bit of the milk to loosen that up. And you can see my paste starts to turn into pancake batter, but this is still a little too thick for crepes. So what I want it to do is look like pretty thin wallpaper paste. So I'll go ahead and add the rest of my milk in there. Whisk that up and look at this nice smooth batter we have now. People may argue that you add the milk and the eggs first and then the flour to it. I like to make a paste out of the flour and eggs and then add the milk to it. Lastly, our melted butter. And we'll whisk in the melted butter. Now that I've got my batter made up, I want to let this sit and rest for a few minutes, hopefully in the refrigerator, because again, gelatinization of starches. I want that uh, flour to absorb as much of this liquid as I can, giving me a much stiffer crepe. In the meantime, our pan on the stove, which we've heated up, we want to make sure that this is a very hot pan. How do we do that? Lick our finger and, no, of course not, uh, we have a little cup of water up here and I'll take a little bit of water on my fingers. Put that in the pan. You see that immediate evaporation of moisture? That means our pan is ready. That means this pan is at least 212 degrees because water evaporates immediately. Well, with the egg protein in our crepes, what we want is the coagulation of the egg protein to stiffen the crepe and, and help that it doesn't rip or be too thin. That's 165 degrees that egg protein coagulates. A pan of 212 is at least what I need. So hot pan first and foremost. 
Secondly, I'm going to go ahead and season the pan with a little bit of butter. I've got a stick of butter here. I really only need to do this once at the beginning of the process. We don't need to season the pan each time. So back on the heat, pan hot is the most important thing. And what I have here is a portion scoop. It's a one ounce ladle to make consistent products. Once again, we need to por portion them correctly, whether it's cookies or whether uh, with a, a drop cookie, whether it's the pastry bag with uh, spritz cookies, anything like that, everything needs to be portioned correctly so that it cooks correctly. So my one ounce ladle, I'm going to go ahead and start to ladle some of this crepe batter into the pan. With my hot pan that's been buttered, seasoned, I've got my one ounce ladle. I'm going to go ahead and add exactly one ounce of the crepe batter to the pan pick the pan up and make sure that the crepe batter covers the entire bottom of the pan. Now what I'm looking for is you see how wet it is? You see how wet the crepe is on top? I'm looking for this to dry, to be totally dry throughout. That's when I know that it's basically been cooked and now I don't have any more crepe batter running so it's time to flip my crepe over. We can do this one of two ways. You can do it the cool chef way and flip it in the air. But what I find a little easier for people is to get your spatula up under the edge of the crepe, pull it down toward the edge of the pan. See I told you the first crepe is for the dog. Now once my pan has recovered some heat and I've got some butter in there, let's go back with another one ounce ladle of my crepe batter. Exactly one ounce so all my crepes are the same size. Don't be guessing at it because you'll have thicker crepes and thinner crepes. I'm going to swirl the pan around to cover the entire bottom of the pan and look that it's still wet. The crepe batter is still running and what I want to do is cook this until it's dry on top. Cooking it basically all the way through from the bottom till I see my crepes start to turn dry and now I see that it's not running anymore and I can do one of two things to flip my crepe. The easiest way for most people is to get this spatula up under the edge of the crepe like this, pull it toward the end of the pan and simply fold it over to cook the other side. And because it was cooked almost all the way through, it's two, three, four, five and it's done. Or if you want to be fancy chef type, well you can roll the crepe down to the edge of the sloped side of the pan, up and back and flip it over that way and our crepe is done. And since it was cooked almost entirely on the first side till it was dry, when I flip it over it's two, three, four, five and it's done. It's less than five seconds and what I've got here is some parchment paper. Just turn the pan over and lay that crepe out on the parchment paper. Keep it nice and flat. Set the pan back on the stove to recover some of the heat and we'll do another one. And my next crepe off the pan, I've got some parchment paper here. Just turn the pan right over and sometimes you got to get your hands in here and flatten it out a little bit. And I've got these two nice crepes that I went ahead and made. Why do I put them on parchment paper? Well if I'm going to use them immediately that it really isn't necessary. But I'll show you a cool trick if you make a whole bunch of crepes, lay them on parchment paper like this. Now what I do is roll the parchment paper up with the crepes in it. And now I can go ahead and freeze this. And then at some later date when I need crepes, I'll go ahead and unroll it. And there's my two crepes ready to use. It's an easy way to keep them from sticking together parchment paper and roll it up. So once you've learned how to make crepes, what can you make with crepes? Oh yeah, yeah, you can make everything and anything. Every culture in the world has something that they stuff something else into. If it's empanadas, if it's samosas in India, if it's crepes in France, um, every culture has something that you can stuff in here. So what can you stuff in here? Well ice cream, dessert crepes are wonderful, chocolate, vanilla ice cream, chocolate syrup on top, fantastic. Let's go to the other end of the day. Breakfast, scrambled eggs with some brie and dill rolled into a crepe maybe a white sauce on top of that. How about lunch? Um, how about turkey and uh, bacon in a crepe with uh, some compound mayonnaise, a red pepper mayonnaise or something on top? That's lunch. How about dinner? Sauteed chicken, goat cheese, mushrooms stuffed in a crepe. It's absolutely endless. You don't need a crepe maker. You need to become a crepe maker. You don't need a specific appliance. You need the basic procedure. You don't need fancy cooking. You need cooking course.